What is up my good friends, it is your old pal Closet Gamer back again for another how to video on Age of Engineering. So I'm in age 10 now on my playthrough and I've come across this guy, this arc furnace. And the problem with it is, is if you want to automate it, you'll usually put an Ender IO conduit on it and what happens is one stack will go straight there and it will leave the remaining slots completely empty. Which is not good for an arc furnace because you want to make use of these other 12 slots because it can smelt 12 things at a time. So what I decided to do was to look at how we can automate this um, and then what I've decided to do is to create a program in RF Tools Control that will take items from this chest above it and you can use an ME interface I believe um, and it will distribute them evenly into the slots below. So let's have a look at how it works. So the chrome dust goes in there, it starts to pull it in and it has distributed it evenly into these slots here and now it's smelting. Pretty fantastic. I've also got these electrodes enchanted as well. Uh, with unbreaking three because they last a damn sight longer. So let's have a look at how this program actually works, shall we? Now this looks insanely complicated and I can assure you it is absolutely not complicated, it just looks it. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how this program works and then um, I will tear this all apart and I will run through exactly how to assemble this program along with some of the infrastructure side of things for the RF Tools control machines. So the first thing that the program does is it creates the number zero. Essentially it adds zero to zero which gives it zero. It then puts that zero into a variable and we've only got one variable and uh, we've got, just got variable zero here. So the variable location zero is set to zero. Okay, I hope that's clear. Then what happens is the uh, node that is connected, which is up there, the node, it will pull an item from the inventory above and it will just pull one at a time and it will put it in the inventory of the node. Then what happens is the node will push an item from its internal inventory into the arc furnace and the location to which it pushes it is dependent upon this variable, okay? So the variable at the moment is set to zero. It's not zero, variable zero. So at the moment it's pointing to zero, which means that the item will go in slot zero of the arc furnace. The next step is to increase that variable by one. So it adds one to it using this tile. Then it loads that variable into the memory. So the variable location zero is now set to one. It then prints that out as a log message into the console before checking whether it is equal to 12. And remember, the maximum number of slots in the arc furnace is 12, so we do not want to go above 12. It says to the variable, are you equal to 12? And of course, at the moment, it's going to say no because it's 1. So what happens, it goes back to the start and it fetches items from above and it puts them in below and it puts them in below in the slot that's defined by the variable. So now the variable is one, so it will put it in the next slot. It adds another one to it, so the variable now becomes two. It commits it to memory, displays it on the screen, checks whether it's 12. If it's not, it goes back to the start, and it does that 12 times. It comes to here, it says, are you 12? And it says, yes, I am 12. So then it displays the message reset, and you can see that it's going, cycling through the program here, and the reset is coming up every time it reaches 12. When it reaches 12, it comes back to the start, it sets the variable back to zero, and the whole thing starts again. Now, as I said, it looks complicated, um, and I'm going to get rid of all of this now, and I'm going to show you exactly how to set it all up. I'm going to build the program, and I'm going to run through some of the infrastructure as well to link these nodes to these consoles and things. So I will be back in a sec, uh, and we will get this bad guy set up. Right, so if you are already familiar with RF Tools Control, um, this is just going to be the infrastructure bit. So you can skip ahead to the time that I'm going to put down the bottom. If you are just getting started with RF Tools Control, then I suggest you watch this part because this part is about setting up nodes and things just to get everything linked up. It won't take too long, I promise. So the first thing that you're going to need is the programmer. Uh, and the programmer is where you're going to be doing your programming and program creation. The second thing you're going to need is a processor, and processors require power. Uh, so I've put it above some energy conduit here, um, and that should start powering up using the column at the top there. Um, you should see that it's starting to get RF. Now within the processor, you're also going to need some kind of CPU core. So this is the brain of the computer. Um, this one works just fine. I'm sure the smaller one will work just fine as well because the program is fairly simple. Now this program uses variables as we showed before. Variables are just numbers that you want the computer to remember. However, you need to give your computer memory in order for it to remember numbers. So you'll need to give it some RAM. Each RAM module can handle up to eight variables, uh, but we only need one variable for this particular operation. 
Now, if you're going to use exactly the same setup as me, you're going to need something called a node. Um, and I'm going to place my node right about here on top of this port here of the arc furnace there. And I'm going to call it closet. And I'm just going to call it node 1. Perfect. Now, for in order for your node to actually be recognized by your processor, you need a thing called a network card. So this network card has got a range of 17 by 17, so we're close enough. Uh, but there's an advanced one as well that does 33 by 33. Now, in order to get our node to be recognized by our processor, we need to type in net setup closet. And it will say it's found one node and it found zero crafting stations. That's because we haven't got any crafting stations. We've only got one node. Lovely. So it's recognized that the node is there. And now we are good to go with some actual programming. Okay, so let's go over to our programmer and start some programming. So I've just shift clicked this program card into there. The program card is going to allow us to save our program and run it in our processor. Um, and at the end, what we'll do is save the program. Um, so the program itself starts off with an event. You can use a redstone event if you like, or you can use some other signal event. I'm just going to have an event that repeats itself, and it's going to run every five ticks. Now, as I mentioned before, this program uses variables, and we're going to have to use a variable to act as a counter. To set up this variable, we're going to have to do two things. The first is to create the number zero, and we're going to use this by adding two numbers together. What we're going to do is we're going to say the first value is zero, and the second value is zero. Add those two together, and then push that number into this next box. This next box is going to set the variable for us. And the variable location that we want it to set is zero. That's not the number zero, that is the location zero here. So that number is going to be stored here. So what it's going to do, it's going to take the output from this box and store it in this variable. Okay, so it's going to set variable zero to zero. So now let's move on to the part of the program that's going to be talking about moving items actually around. Um, first of all, we're going to need this fetch items tile. So what this is going to do, it's going to fetch items from the crate that's above the node, and it's going to pull it into its internal buffer. So the node that we're talking about, the node name is 1, and the side relative to that node is the upside. Access isn't important at the moment because you can pull from any side of the crate. Now if we look at the node that we set up earlier, we can see that its name is 1, its channel is closet, and the name is what we're referencing. So if we go back in here, and we look at this, we can see that node 1, the upside, is where we're pulling from. The slot doesn't matter because we want to pull from anywhere in the crate and also the item doesn't matter, although if you want to smelt specific ores and things like that then you can set that to whatever you like. The amount obviously matters, we want only one item at a time and then the slot out also matters, that is slot 0. Slot out is basically the processor's internal buffer, that is this slot here. The next part is the part that pushes the items from the internal inventory of the node into the inventory of the arc furnace. So the inventory that we're talking about again is node 1. This time we're going to push it out of the downside, but we're going to push it into the upside of the arc furnace. And if you remember, this was formed from multi-block structure. These are still seen as individual blocks and they have sides. So this block here, that is the upside of this block. The slot that we're pushing into is defined by the variable and the variable that we're going to be calling up is the one that's in location 0. The amount is also going to be 1 and the slot in is going to be 0. So remember, slot in is the processor slot. So we're going to be pulling from this slot here and we're going to be pushing into the slot that's defined by the variable. At the moment, the variable is set to 0. Now let's define the addim function. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one to that variable. So we're going to say the variable that is in index 0, I want it to increase by a constant of 1. That's going to add 1 to that variable. We're then going to write that variable to the variable location, and we're going to use set variable. So the variable location is 0. So what it's saying is it's going to add 1 to that variable, then it's going to write it to the variable location. Now initially we are going to want to see what's going on, so what I decided to do was use these log messages. What we're going to do is we're going to tell the log message to display the last string. So the last string is 1, because it's just added 1 to our variable. It'll output that into the console and we'll be able to see that it's actually working. 
The next part of the operation is the equality check. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep adding 1 to our variable uh, and we're going to keep doing it until it gets to 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to say variable 0 are you equal to 12? Then in the tile you can double click these little connectors and they will turn to red and green. So the green side is when it does equal 12 and the red side is when it doesn't equal 12. If it does equal 12 I want it to output a message and I want that message to say a constant and I want it to say reset. That will give us a message that says reset every time the program cycles all the way up to 12 and comes back. Now what we need to do is to set the loop all the way back to the beginning. So just by pulling out these wires you can see that it's actually connecting these one by one using the little green connect symbols. So that is the positive part of the loop complete. So what we're saying is if the variable is equal to 12 then exit and loop all the way back to the start. We now need to set the other loop that is going to repeat the cycle and increase the variable by one each time. So that is a negative part of the loop complete. Remember to double click this connector here because it won't connect automatically and the same goes for this one. So now what we're saying is keep adding one by going around in this loop to that variable and the variable defines the slot location within the furnace. Once you get to 12, reset back to zero again. Now if we come and we save that and we're just going to give it a name arc furnace We can then take that card out of there and we can put it into our processor. What it's going to say is it's missing an internal slot. So we need to click resource allocation and give it that slot. Now what it will start to do is it will start to loop through the program. And you can see on the console that it's actually looping through. Now if we come into our furnace up here and we place some of these items in there, it should start distributing these items evenly within the arc furnace. Hooray! So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It did take me quite a long time to actually record it because I kept screwing it up, but I got there in the end. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like, please leave a comment, and uh, also have a look at my Age of Engineering series as well. It's on my channel, and I will see you guys next time.